Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so part 25 and a really cool problem from the MIT integration B here, yeah? Okay, the first thing we should do is uh, look at this infinite product that's after this x and before the dx, so this here. And so if we isolate it, uh, then the infinite product, this is going to be, well, this, but not quite right because this is finite and this is an infinite product, right? So we need a dot, dot, dot at the end. Okay, now... Um, where is capital sigma adds capital pi here multiplies so we read this as the product from k equals 1 to infinity of cosine of x divided by 2 to the k and so what happens is k is replaced by 1 and then we take that and multiply by when we replace k by 2 and so on and as I said it's an infinite product because of that infinity right there right okay 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 cool now, we know that 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, and so on. So, reckoning that, we can write this, but again, we need a dot, dot, dot at the end because it's an infinite product. Next, we recall from trigonometry the sine double angle formula, which says that sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And so, here in this equation, if we divide both sides by 2 sine x, then we get this equation. And so, this is very useful in this question because what we can do now is... Uh, figure out what cosine of x over 2 is using this right hand side, right? And so if we do that, then we write that cosine of x over 2 is sine of 2 times x over 2 divided by 2 times sine of x over 2. Now, since this 2 here and x over 2 are both in the argument of sine, we can multiply them and just reduce it to uh, sine x here. This here reduces to sine x, right? Whereas here, we can't multiply this 2 and that x over 2, so we like are forced to keep it as it is, right? Okay, now we do the same with cosine of x over 4, and the same with cosine of x over 8, and you get the picture. So maybe it's abusive to do cosine of x over 16, so le let's go etc., and then skip on to uh, the uh, kth term in this product, which is this here. And so cosine of x divided by 2 to the k is going to first be this, and then again here multiplying 2 and x over 2 to the k, we get this here, right? Okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. Now, you see what we're going to do, right? You should guess what we're going to do. Well, we're going to replace cosine of x over 2 here with this here, which is sine of x divided by 2 sine of x over 2, and similarly replace cosine of x over 4 with this here, and yada, yada, you get it, you get it, you get it. Okay, so when we do that, look at what happens. Super convenient, right? Because, um, yeah, when we substitute for each of these guys with what they equal, uh, in terms of the signs, right? What happens is we're going to get a sine of x over 2 here in the denominator, but he has a counterpart upstairs here, and so they cancel. And then sine of x over 4 here will have a counterpart here. They cancel. And sine of x over 8 here will have a counterpart in the numerator here, and this guy here will have a counterpart in the denominator. Notice the dot, dot, dot here, right? And so we're going to keep crossing out. But the crossing out process doesn't terminate, right? Because if I displayed um, more of these guys, they're going to keep crossing out. So the crossing out process goes ad infinitum. Um, okay, so let's keep that in mind, which is the crossing out process goes on forever. But also, let's keep in mind the survivors uh, on finitely many terms displayed here, right? And the survivors are sine x here survives in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have 2 here another 2, another 2, another 2. They're all in a product, and there's k of them. So in the denominator, we're going to get 2 to the power k, but also the sine of x divided by 2 to the power k survives, right? Okay, uh, now we need space and perhaps time. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, definitely space. So let's do that and uh, remind ourselves of where we left off, which is this here again. We can keep crossing out ad infinitum, but let's keep this guy because we must, and uh, 2 to the k, and then this guy, and let's also keep the dot, 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 right? So where we're at is now our infinite product is reduced to this. Okay, now, um, saying that the crossing out process goes on forever is saying the same thing as uh, taking the limit as k goes to infinity of this here, we don't need that there, right? Like, um, so uh, let's uh, first uh, show this, right? You see, like, uh, instead of saying we can cross out forever, what we can do is uh, look at what happens as k goes to infinity of 
this here, right? And that way we don't have to write the dot, dot, dot because writing this here is the same thing as recognizing that uh, what came before it is canceled except for this guy and what's going to come after it is going to keep canceling. And so we only have to look at what happens to this as k goes to infinity, right? You should be able to follow that. And if you don't follow, then ask me questions in the comment section and I'll be happy to help. Okay, now, um, for this limit here, right, um, let's isolate it and work on it. Uh, but first, let's uh, write this expression here in uh, a way that's friendly to take the limit of, which is this here. And all I've done is recognize that dividing by 2 to the k is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 2 to the k, and that's that. Otherwise, this here is identical to this here, right? And like I said, for this limit guy, let's isolate him and work on him. Um, okay. And when we do, what we're going to get is 0 over 0 as a limit. And that's because as k goes to infinity, 1 over 2 to the k goes to 0. And um, since this here, right, uh, has k being the variable, x is a constant, right? And so as k goes to infinity, sine of x divided by 2 to the k is going to go to sine of 0, which is also 0. So we get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form that will allow us to use Euler's rule. Yes, I said Euler's rule, not L'Hopital, because L'Hopital was just like some old cracker who had a lot of money and paid to get credit for uh, this theorem, which is uh, Euler's rule, uh, not L'Hopital's. And what it says is that uh, when you have an indeterminate form like 0 over 0, uh, you can take the derivative of uh, the numerator and divide it by the derivative of the denominator and take the limit again and see what happens. But here I haven't... Um, taken uh, derivatives of numerator and denominator yet. All I've done is I've made it clear that 1 divided by 2 to the k is the same thing as 1 half to the power k, right? And so I've done the same here. And I've also made clear that x here is a constant. Uh, so I've written it in front. And then otherwise, I have in the argument of sine here, x times 1 over 2 to the k, which is the same as x times 1 half to the power k. Yeah, OK. Now, um, since we've already seen that this limit is 0 over 0, let's take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and evaluate the limit again. Now, I'm not going to walk you through how to take the derivative of 1 half to the k. It's fairly straightforward um, from Calc 1. But yeah, uh, the derivative of uh, 1 half to the power k is 1 half to the power k times the natural log of 1 half. And in the denominator, the derivative of um, sine of x times 1 half to the k, remember x is a constant, is going to be cosine of x times 1 half to the k, and then by chain rule, the derivative of x times 1 half to the k. Well, since x is a constant, we keep it, and then I've already said the derivative of 1 half to the k is 1 half to the k times the natural log of 1 half. Oh, how convenient, because now this guy here, as you can see, can cross out that guy, and so then our limit problem reduces to this, which is this here in the numerator after crossing out we just get a one and in the denominator we just get cosine of x times one half to the power k right um and times x right this x is from that right okay okay and that was from the chain rule like i said x is a constant now as k goes to infinity cosine of one half times um one half to the k times x is going to go to uh cosine of zero because as k goes to infinity one half to the k goes to zero so we get cosine of x times 0, which is cosine of 0. And of course, this x is outside, so we get cosine of 0 times x. The cosine of 0 is 1. So we see that the limit is 1 over x. Oh, wait. So that means that um, since uh, this limit is 1 over x, and the only survivor otherwise we'd had was sine x, our infinite product is simply sine x over x. How nice. Um, OK. So what we can do is first make space like that and see that see that since we just said that our infinite product is simply sine x over x, if we come here and the integrand and replace our infinite product with sine x over x, our integral reduces to this. And clearly we can cross out this x and that x, right? And when we do, we just get the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of sine x. Okay, that's... As simple as ABC, right? Okay, negative cosine x evaluated from 0 to pi over 4, which is negative cosine of pi over 4 minus um, negative cosine of 0, and therefore plus cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, and uh, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. 
So final answer. Yeah. All right. I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Take care.